Hello friends. The size of our universe is truly awe-inspiring, capturing our imagination. Its vastness, however, also brings a sense of disappointment. Consider this, even with our powerful telescopes, if we were to discover another habitable planet like Earth in a distant galaxy, it would take centuries to reach it. In fact, leaving our own galaxy is an impossibility for any individual. As we know, Earth resides in the Milky Way galaxy, with the nearest galaxy being Andromeda, situated approximately 2.5 million light years away. If we were to embark on a spacecraft at the average speed of 28,000 kilometers per hour, it would require a staggering 94.5 billion years to reach Andromeda. Even if we could somehow achieve travel at the speed of light, it would still take 2.5 million years to arrive there. It's undeniably disheartening to contemplate the pursuit of distant planets without the prospect of ever reaching them. However, if there existed a shortcut for intergalactic travel, a means to traverse millions of light years in a matter of months, then the possibilities become truly intriguing. Enter wormholes, my friends, these hypothetical shortcuts hold the potential to revolutionize our understanding and exploration of the cosmos. What makes the concept of wormholes fascinating is that it is not confined to the realm of science fiction, it is rooted in real science. But what exactly are wormholes, and how can we utilize them? To comprehend this, we must delve into Albert Einstein's theory of relativity. When Einstein formulated his theory, he expressed it through a set of equations known as Einstein's field equations. On November 25th, 1915, he publicly presented these equations in a paper and submitted to the Prussian Academy of Sciences in Berlin, Germany. In total, these field equations consist of 10 distinct nonlinear partial differential equations. However, in a condensed form, they can be represented by a single equation. Although we won't delve into the mathematical intricacies in this discussion, it is worth noting that this single equation encompasses considerable complexity. If we were to expand this equation, it would involve numerous intricate steps, enough to leave even avid mathematics enthusiasts feeling dizzy. Broadly speaking, these equations provide insights into how the presence of matter and energy influences the curvature of spacetime. According to Albert Einstein, we can visualize the curvature of spacetime by imagining a large mesh. When objects are placed on this mesh, it bends under their weight. Similarly, the fabric of space-time curves in response to the gravitational pull exerted by massive planets and stars. The greater the gravitational force of an object, the more pronounced the curvature of the space-time mesh around it. Remarkably, Einstein himself was unable to fully solve his field equations. He had only obtained an approximate solution for a specific scenario. It was Carl Schwarzschild who in 1916 became the first person to solve these equations completely. Schwarzschild precisely calculated the extent of space-time curvature caused by a single massive object. His solution played a crucial role in understanding the concept of singularity, what happens when mass becomes infinitely dense. In such a scenario, space-time curvature becomes so intense that the affected region becomes isolated from the rest of the universe. In a significant milestone, the first ever photograph of a black hole was captured by scientists in 2019, decades after its theoretical prediction. Hence, one of the solutions derived from these field equations led to the discovery of black holes. And the thing is, friends, that another solution to these field equations is wormholes. You might be thinking how can we solve one equation and get two solutions? Well, you would remember studying quadratic equations in school. This simple equation also has two solutions, x equals 2 and x equals 3. Both are correct and so, if you see Einstein's field equations, they are much more complicated. Actually, there can be numerous solutions to these, wormhole is one such solution and its scientific name of the wormhole solution is the Einstein-Rosen bridge. This name pays tribute to the collaboration between Albert Einstein and his assistant Nathan Rosen, who devised this solution in 1935. Understanding wormholes is actually quite straightforward. They can be envisioned as shortcuts that connect two points in spacetime. This fascinating concept was vividly portrayed in the film Interstellar. Illustrations. I'll show you how it works. So they have 
they say you want to go from here to there. But it's too far, right? Mm -hmm. So a wormhole bends space like this, so you can take a shortcut through a higher dimension. Okay, so to show that, they've turned three-dimensional space into two dimensions, which turns a wormhole into two dimensions, a circle. What's a circle in three dimensions? Sphere. In our familiar three-dimensional world, we perceive the shortest path between the Milky Way galaxy and the Andromeda galaxy as a vast distance of 2.5 million light years. However, if we consider the possibility of our three-dimensional space being curved or bent within a fourth dimension, it opens up the potential for discovering a more efficient shortcut. Now, comprehending the fourth dimension is challenging for us as we are accustomed to living in three dimensions. Yet, to gain some understanding, we can draw a parallel by comparing two dimensions to three dimensions. Let me provide another example to illustrate this concept. Imagine you want to fly from Delhi to New York on a world map. In two dimensions, a straight line connecting Delhi to New York would seem like the shortest route passing over Africa. However, this is not the actual shortest route when considering the Earth's curved surface in three dimensions. The optimal path involves flying over Finland, Sweden, passing by Iceland and Greenland before reaching New York. While this route appears longer in two dimensions, its efficiency becomes evident in three dimensions. In 1957, scientist John Wheeler published a paper discussing Einstein's Rosen bridges, drawing a similar analogy. He presented the example of an apple being consumed by a worm. The worm travels from one side of the apple to the other, moving through the middle rather than remaining on the apple's surface, akin to how airplanes travel around the Earth's circumference. By doing so, the worm covers a shorter distance, effectively taking a shortcut through space-time. It was Wheeler who coined the term wormhole to describe this phenomenon, giving rise to the origin of the word itself. When you search for the term wormhole on the internet, you will come across various diagrams illustrating the concept. These diagrams are similar to the one shown in the movie Interstellar, where two points are connected through a hole. The idea behind a wormhole is that there is a mesh-like structure in space-time, and within this structure, there exists an object with an incredibly strong gravitational force. This force bends the fabric of space-time so much that it forms a tunnel-like passage, piercing through to the other side. Essentially, the space-time mesh folds onto itself, creating a shortcut for traveling between distant galaxies. However, a limitation of visualizations is that they often depict wormholes in two dimensions, whereas in reality, wormholes would exist in three to four dimensions. Therefore, if a wormhole were to exist, it would likely appear as a spherical object. As you enter the wormhole, the surroundings would appear curved, and if you were to turn around and look back, the Earth would appear to move away from you, creating a circular perspective. This is why the portrayal of the wormhole in the movie Interstellar appears realistic. It is important to note that as of 2023, the concept of wormholes remains purely theoretical. It has been derived theoretically as a potential solution to Einstein's field equations. While scientists have attempted to visualize wormholes in movies, and many theories have been proposed, no practical observation of a wormhole has been made so far. Scientists are uncertain about the existence of wormholes, however, if wormholes were to exist, they would potentially serve as time machines as well. Just imagine being able to traverse millions of light years in a matter of minutes, reaching a destination even before light has had a chance to travel there. Essentially, this would mean jumping from one point in time to another. I have a video on time travel that you can check out by clicking on the iCard, but I kindly request that you watch this video in its entirety before leaving for the time travel video. It is worth considering that, even if wormholes were to exist, it remains unknown whether humans could actually travel through them. If we consider wormholes to be real, numerous practical issues arise. The first question is how these wormhole openings would form. It would require an immensely powerful gravitational force, but where could we find such force? If you have watched the time travel video, you may have guessed the answer, a black hole. According to the theories of Einstein and his assistant Rosen, only black holes possess the gravitational force necessary to create these wormhole tunnels. 
Everything is irresistibly drawn towards black holes and would flow through the wormhole via this tunnel. However, the next question arises, what lies on the other side of this tunnel? If there is a black hole on the other side, there would be no means of escape. You would be trapped within the tunnel. In this case, the wormhole would not serve as a passageway from one location to another, but rather as a trap. To create an exit point, there must be something on the other side that is the complete opposite of a black hole in every sense. It should possess equal power to black holes, but operate in the exact opposite manner. It should repel things instead of attracting them, allowing for an exit and this is where white holes come into our story. Once again, white holes are a concept that has been theoretically proven through Einstein's field equations. Besides black holes and wormholes, white holes provide another solution within these equations. But what exactly are these white holes? Just as white is the opposite of black, a white hole is the complete antithesis of a black hole. While nothing can escape a black hole once it is trapped within, in a white hole, no light can enter, only emit from it. This means that white holes would appear incredibly bright and radiate a white color. The term white hole was first coined by Russian theoretical physicist and cosmologist Igor Novikov in 1964. Scientists proposed that a white hole is essentially a time reversal of a black hole. Similar to how the event horizon of a black hole represents a point of no return, where nothing can escape its gravitational pull, the event horizon of a white hole acts as a boundary of no admission, where nothing can surpass that point. Objects within a white hole can venture outward and interact with the external world, but they cannot return inside. Although this concept aligns with Einstein's theory of relativity, the actual formation of white holes remains unknown and therefore, the existence of white holes continues to be a subject of scientific discussion. Some scientists proposed that during the Big Bang and the creation of the universe, everything might have emerged from an immense white hole. Another theory builds upon the ideas put forth by Stephen Hawking where he suggested that a black hole would eventually evaporate as radiation continuously leaks from it, but when a black hole evaporates and ceases to exist, what becomes of the information and matter it contained? Quantum theory adheres to a fundamental law known as the no-hiding theorem, which states that no information can be permanently lost. According to this theorem, even if information appears to vanish from a system, it still exists somewhere within the universe. Theoretically, if all matter and information are drawn into a black hole, they could be expelled following the black hole's demise, potentially through a white hole. Based on this notion, some scientists propose that a white hole forms when a black hole dies. However, our current understanding lacks substantial information regarding the process of a black hole's demise. Conversely, some scientists argue that the existence of white holes is theoretically impossible due to a violation of the second law of thermodynamics. As you may have learned in school, this law states that the entropy of a system cannot decrease. For instance, if I tear a piece of paper, the entropy of the system increases and it is impossible to reassemble the torn paper exactly as it was before. Similarly, when objects are shredded by a paper shredding machine, the entropy in the system increases. Black holes function in a similar manner, devouring entire planets and stars, ultimately increasing the entropy of the universe. However, if we imagine the opposite scenario, where entropy decreases, it contradicts the second law of thermodynamics. If white holes were to exist, their existence would imply a reduction in entropy, which seems to be unattainable. Despite this argument, some scientists believe in the existence of white holes and claim that in 2006, a white hole was observed. On June 14, 2006, the Neil Gorel Swift Observatory, a space satellite, detected an astronomical event known as GRB 060614, which was a gamma-ray burst, an energetic explosion observed in distant galaxies. Typically, these bursts occur when a black hole consumes a massive star, resulting in a bright flash of light. However, in this particular case, no evidence of a star was found, leading to the hypothesis that it could be an observation of a white hole. Since that observation, no similar events have been witnessed, rendering white holes purely a theoretical concept thus far. 
However, it is important to recognize that black holes were once solely theoretical as well, but eventually, their existence was established. Therefore, it is plausible that white holes may follow a similar path in the future, transitioning from theory to practical confirmation. Nevertheless, even if the existence of wormholes or white holes is proven, scientists still harbor doubts regarding whether humans would be capable of traveling through them. One intriguing development in the exploration of wormholes came in 2015 when scientists successfully created a magnetic wormhole in a laboratory. Up until now, our discussions about wormholes have revolved around their gravitational force, but researchers have achieved a breakthrough when it comes to the magnetic force. So, what does this mean? We are familiar with the two ends of a magnet, the North Pole and the South Pole, which naturally attract each other. Even if a magnet is broken into two pieces, each piece will still possess both poles. Using special materials, scientists manage to separate the two poles of the magnets and create an invisible gap between them. In essence, the magnetic field of one magnet entered one end of the wormhole and emerged from the other end. A visualization of this can be seen in the left image, showcasing the device created by scientists to separate the magnet's poles. This device effectively functions as a wormhole for the magnetic field. Although we can visually perceive this device, the right image reveals the magnetic fields, with one side displaying a magnet's pole and the other side illustrating the separated pole at a distance. Just as a wormhole in space bends the curvature of spacetime, this magnetic wormhole bends the magnetic field. To create this magnetic wormhole, scientists utilized a high-temperature superconducting material called yttrium-barium copper oxide, which was submerged in a liquid nitrogen bath during the experiment. Even if the existence of wormholes remains unproven in the future, it does not imply that alternative means of faster-than-light travel cannot be discovered. Theoretical proposals such as the Alcubierre drive offer potential solutions. The concept put forth by theoretical physicist Miguel Alcubierre in 1994 involves a spacecraft capable of exceeding the speed of light by contracting spacetime curvature in front while expanding it at the rear. The Alcubierre drive presents another theoretical solution to Einstein's field equations. It will undoubtedly be fascinating to explore additional solutions derived from these field equations and the practical implications they may hold. I hope you found this episode informative. If you did, I kindly request you to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. I would love to hear your suggestions for future video topics in the comments section below. Thank you sincerely for your support. We will meet again very soon, but in the meantime, please feel free to explore my other videos. Goodbye.